Teen Gamer here, and you already know what time it is. 4.2! New Spiral Bliss. Let's just get to it.
For the new Spiral Abyss version 4.2. So this Spiral Abyss wasn't that bad. I thought it would be bad because it has lectors, but there's like only like three of them. So yeah, it isn't as bad as I thought it would be. So um, yeah, well, I'm going to be going over the uh, floors real quick, but I will be going into them in greater analysis in the commentary video, like I always do. So, I'm just gonna give you a guys a brief rundown on these floors, so yeah. Well, um, floor 11 isn't bad, um, I will say. Um, it's just, you have to use Hydro and Electro characters because of the lane line, um, disorder for the buffs, so yeah. Um, uh, make sure you use those, um, teams when you, uh, challenge this floor. So yeah, um, the enemies here aren't that bad, um, it's just crabs, robots, Elector right there, those, um, primal constructs right there, and then we have operatives, and then the Vishap. Yeah, these aren't bad. <laughs> these aren't bad at all. Um, the operatives kinda might be a problem since they are a bit tanky, but I'm pretty sure if you have a really good team, this would be an easy three-star clear. Because Vishaps can just die in like a few minutes or a few seconds. So yeah. Um, Lecters, um, again, just bring a Hydro character. Um, it's the same for the Crab, just bring a Hydro character and then their shields are gone. So yeah. And then for the second half, just bring an Electro character because Primal Constructs um, have a mechanic where you have to use a Electro attack to basically have them um, go out of their invisible cloak mode. So yeah. Um, for first half, just bring Hydro, and for second half, just bring Electro, and you should be fine with Floor 11. And Floor 12 is a bit interesting, since there are Lectors on first half, yeah. There's a Lector right here, and a Lector right here. So, you deal with one Lector on the first chamber, and you deal with two on the third chamber. On the second chamber, it's just a bunch of robots, just throw away stuff. And for the second half, the second half is just a boss gauntlet. Yeah, it's a boss gauntlet. <laughs> Can you believe it? Yeah, so in the first chamber, second half, we have the algorithm of semi um, instrument matrix of overseer network. So it's that big robot thing that you fight in Sumeru. Just bring Electro. Um, it's the same thing with floor 11 with those um, robots as well. If you bring Electro, it goes out of its invisible mode. So yeah, um, same with Quicken Reactions, it also get, goes out of its invisible mode. So yeah. Make sure you bring an Electro character on the second half. Same applies for the first half, since there are Electors, you bring Hydro. Bring Hydro to destroy their shields. That's basically it. So Hydro first half, Electro second half. And then in Chamber 2 in the second half, you have the Jade Plume Terror Shroom. Yeah, you see why it's a boss gauntlet, because you fight only one thing in the entire chamber. So yeah, this is a boss, this is a boss, and this is a boss. So yeah. In Chamber 2, it's Jade Plume Terror Shroom. Electro or Pyro will basically destroy this thing. So yeah, um, nothing more to be said. You fought this thing before. You already know how its mechanics work. He's been featured in a lot of abysses. So yeah, Jade Plume Terror Shroom. He's the same as always. And then in second half, we have the Icewind Sweet Dirge of Copelia. Yeah, this is the Copelia version, by the way. So that means that it's not the Copelius version, which has the Ice Shield. So that means you could wail on it. Yeah, you can bring an Usia reaction to uh, destroy its shield, but you don't need to. <laughs> you don't need to. So uh, yeah, you could just uh, destroy this thing without any worries if you do have shields or heals that can um, basically mitigate the damage that you take. So yeah, um, second half is not that bad. 
So yeah, first um, chamber, not that bad, except for the lector. Second chamber is pretty easy. Third chamber is where all your effort will go to. Since there are two lectors and they are spread out far apart, <laughs> as you saw in the um, abyss run that I did. Yeah, they are far apart. So you want to gather them or deal with them one at a time. I dealt with them one at a time, which took way more time. So yeah, um, make sure you have range. I'm just going to say that. Make sure you have range. But yeah, that's basically it for uh, floor 12. And now it's time to actually go over the characters that I used on this um, abyss. So, without any further ado, we gotta go to the party info. We're gonna be going on this screen right here. And then deploy. So that we can um, basically uh, showcase uh, the characters on their raw stats. So yeah, here we go. So, first half team. Our first member is Hu Tao. <laughs> So yeah, my Huto has not changed. Um, she won't ever change because, well, look at this. Crit rate, 61.8%. Crit damage, 234.6. Pyro damage is good too. And her HP is a astounding 37k. So yeah, um, she won't change. <laughs> She's already too good. As for her weapon, I have Sapahoma, um, R1, because I'm not a whale. <laughs> uh, Sapahoma is her best weapon, so that's why I gave it to her. Um, there's no other weapon you would run. Um, you could run a, uh, the Black Cliff, um, pull arm, or you can run the, uh, Deathmatch. But the Staff of Homa is the best weapon for Hu Tao, so I just ran that. As for Artifact Set, I have Four Piece Crimson Witch of Flames. This is her best set currently, besides the Shimiwawa's, um, Four Piece Set. But, uh, Crimson Witch... Is what I ran. Um, it basically fits her uh, kit perfectly since she's just doing vaporize and melt most of the time on her Huta Double Hydro. So yeah, uh, that is the set I went with. For constellations, I have Red C1. This is her best constellation ever. This literally makes her the best power DPS in the entire game. Um, the only other power DPS that could contend with her is, uh, well, Jungling. So yeah, but Jungling is a sub DPS. Um, Hu Tao is a main DPS. So yeah, um, Hu Tao, with this, becomes the best DPS in the game, since she does not consume charge attack stamina, which is really, really good, because her gameplay is all about the charge attacks. And as for talents, 10, 10, 10. Yes, I triple crowned her, because I use her a lot. So yeah, there is Hu Tao. Pretty, pretty good um, pyro DPS. Still one of the best to this day, and I still use her to this very day. She's just way too good. Next up, we have... Our boy, the Geo Archon, Mr. Zhongli himself. So Zhongli, um, he got a massive overhaul, so now he's actually really good. <laughs> so his max HP is at 50,000. Remember when he's at 45k? Yeah, I added an extra 5k, so now his shield is actually pretty good. But at the cost of that, I nerfed his crit rate crit damage, yes. So this is literally the bare minimum of a sub DPS should have. So yeah. 40%, 102% um, ratio right there, but he has 50k, so that's really, really good. As for weapon, I have Black Tassel. This is his best weapon. Yeah, no joke, <laughs> because it's the only weapon with HP% percent that is pretty good. If you want to run another weapon besides a crappy Black Tassel, you can run Staff of Homa. That is also his best weapon, but... Black Tassel is literally his best weapon for shield support Zhongli, so this is what I ran. As for artifacts, I have Tenacity of the Middle Lift. This is his best set, no questions asked. It literally supports the team, increases shield strength as well. So yeah, this is literally Zhongli's best artifact set. As for constellations, I have him at C0. He doesn't need constellations to be good. And besides, I'm not a whale, so yeah. And as for talents, I have 6106. Yes, I leveled this up, because this is the only talent you should level up. Unless you want Zhongli to do more damage, then he can level up Planet Befall. But um, his E is his main gameplay. He is there to protect the team. So that is why I level 10 his shield. So yeah, there is Zhongli. Pretty, pretty good uh, Geo support. Yeah. And here we have the newest member of our Spiral Abyss team. Lady Farina, Miss Farina. So... Miss Farida, oh boy. Um, she, yeah, she's pretty good. 
uh, Spar this Spyro Abyss made me test her out, and she's really, really, really good. I think she's probably the only reason why I even beat the Abyss with 9 stars without Nouvellet. So, yeah. Um, as you can see there, 28k HP. Um, I didn't give her a lot of HP because she gets it naturally from Constellations. You'll see soon enough. But her crit rate is at 53, crit damage is at 249. Energy recharge is around 200%. So yeah, she could get her burst up constantly, um, as you saw in the uh, Spiral Abyss attempt that I did. Um, she also did a lot of damage, since she has crit rate, crit damage ratios um, up the wazoo. And then her HP is at 28,000, but it gets boosted by this constellation right here, which we will talk about later. Next up, we have her weapon, which is Splendor of Tranquil Waters. This is her best weapon. Um, yeah. There's no other weapon you would run on her. Um, you could run Festering Desire. Um, that is also a free-to-play weapon you can run. But people did not play Genshin at 1.1. So uh, the be next best weapon is the Fishing Sword um, that you get for fishing in Fontaine. So yeah, you could run that instead. But Splendor of Trinkle Waters is her best weapon because it gives... Um, her elemental skill more damage and it also increases her max hp every time your hp increases or decreases so yeah that is why i didn't give her a lot of hp because her weapon gives it naturally and the constellations give it naturally too as for artifact set i have golden troop this is her best set for sub dps farina and also for support farina yeah it's both <laughs> so yeah if you want to run a support and sub dps farina golden troop is the way to go you can also run other sets too, like Ocean Hued Clam or Four Piece Maidens if you want pure healing. You can run Tenacity of the Millith if you want your team to have more buffs. Or you can run the Two Piece HP set, so HP HP for Farina to basically get like a bajillion HP. So yeah, it's up to you to decide whether you want to build your Farina those ways, but I decided to run Golden Troop. As for Constellations, I have her at C2. C2 is the best constellation for support Farina because at C1 she gains um, a limit of 400 fanfare with a 150 fanfare to start when you use her burst. And then in C2 she accelerates the fanfare gain by 250% and also um, when your fanfare gets overflowed, so basically when it's past the 400 limit, you get a max HP increase of max of 2 or 140 percent so yeah that is the reason why i didn't give her a lot of hp because she gets it naturally with this since her fanfare will overflow a lot um because of the team she is run on and as for talents 696 this is literally the max i could get it because i still have to wait for weekly bosses hooray i love this content being locked against weeks i love it it's like tcg all over again so yeah, um, six nine six. This is literally the best I could get it. Next week, this will be at ten. So yeah, um, <laughs> but as of now, it's six nine six. But yeah, Farina pulled her own weight, as you saw right there. Really, really good hydro support. The best support in the game, in my opinion. Um, and also one of the best hydro sub DPSs in the game. She's just way too good. So yeah. Next up, we haven't used this character in a while. Xingqiu. Yeah. <laughs> um, I use them because, well, double hydro. And also, Yelan is free um, to basically put on whatever team I want. So yeah, Shing Cho is just there to fill up the hydro uh, slot. So yeah, here is Shing Cho. As you see there, crit rate, crit damage is basically average. But what I want to focus on is the energy recharge because of the set he runs. But before that, we got to go over all of his other steps. So... This is his weapon, the Sack Sword. It is R5. This is his best weapon. There is no other weapon you would run because his E gives him a lot of particles. And if he uses E twice in Sack Sword, you get his burst back automatically. So yeah, um, this is literally his best set. No questions asked. As for artifact set, I have Four Piece Emblem. This is his best set too for sub DPS Shingcho, which is what he plays. He is a sub DPS. So, yeah, um, this is a set that you should run <laughs> on Xing Chou because it is his best set. As for Constellations, I am at C6. He literally is, like, one of the easiest characters to get C6 because he's common on, like, every banner ever. And also, he appears in the shop. So, yeah, you could just buy a Xing Chou for yourself on the shop. 
And also, um, if you're a day one player like me, you would have gotten him C6 by now. Because, well, he's a day one character. So, yeah. As for talents, I have 6, 10, 13. Yes, I crowned this because this is his main bread and butter. So, yeah, that is Xing Cho. Still a really good sub DPS to this very day. I'm still one of the best Hydro sub DPSs. Contends with Yelon. So, yeah. And here is the second half team. Oh boy. Um, I still think, in my opinion, that Hyper Bloom is the best team in the entire game because it just does so much single target damage. And this is no exception because I just ran a Hyper Bloom team on the second half since it's just a whole boss gauntlet. So yeah. Well, anyways, time to talk about the members of the Hyper Bloom team. First up, Raiden Shogun. So, um, Raiden, um... I am planning to get her constellation soon because I use her way too much. So yeah, um, every single spiral abyss I use Raiden Shogun. Uh, there's no reason not for me to use her because she's just way too good. <laughs> she is a DPS, a sub, and a support all rolled into one character. So yeah. As you can see here, crit rate crit damage is basically average, but her energy recharge is through the roof. Since she scales off of energy recharge, I basically had to stack this a lot. So yeah, Raiden is just way too broken for her own good <laughs> because of this. So yeah, uh, she doesn't need that much crit rate crit damage because this energy recharge just basically carries the damage for her anyway. As for her weapon, I have Engulfing Lightning. This is her best weapon. No questions asked. The Her other best weapon is the Catch, which is a fishing pole arm that you can get. So yeah, you could get the Catch or you could get Engulfing Lightning. I chose Engulfing Lightning. As for Artifact Set, I have 4-Piece Emblem. This is her best set, her best support, her best sub, and her best main DPS set. There's no other set you would ever run on her because her bread and butter is literally her burst. As for Constellations, I have her at C0. I am, and I am planning to get this to C2 because her C2 is just way too broken for her own good. And since I use Raiden a lot as a sub D or as a main DPS, this is literally made for her. Because it ignores 60% of an opponent's defense if you use her, well, her burst. So yeah, um, that is her main bread and butter. So yeah, this is a really, really good constellation. And well, stay tuned for the next version update because people speculate that Raiden might be on the next uh, banner. So yeah, stay tuned for Navia and Raiden pulls. As for talents, 10, 10, 10, I use her. Remember. <laughs> so I triple crowned her. So yeah, there is Raiden. Still really good. Um, one of the best main DPSs in the game. Um, besides, well, the other contenders. But yeah, Raiden is the best Electro DPS in the game. No questions asked. Next up, we have the best Dendro support in the game. And the best Dendro sub DPS in the game. We have Nahida. <laughs> the Dendro goddess herself. <laughs> so Nahida. Um... As you see here, her elemental mastery is extremely, extremely high. Um, because of the set she runs and the set that she um, dons and also her talents and stuff, she could get up to 1,000 EM. So yeah, that's the reason why I have her at 800, because she doesn't need 1,000. <laughs> so yeah, um, and besides, in her talents, right here, I think. Yeah, um, she needs to be... At a thousand because that is uh, her main limit on um, the bonus damage that she can use so yeah um, that's basically why you want her to be under a thousand or at a thousand it's because if you go overflow um, over a thousand then um, you just get wasted buffs so yeah you only do that if you're like running main DPS Nahida so yeah all right here are her stats so as you can see here, EM really high. Crit rate, crit damage is basically typical for a sub DPS. Um, it is basically the bare minimum. She doesn't need that much energy recharge because her burst cost is really low. So yeah. <laughs> As for her weapon, a thousand floating dreams. This is her best weapon. No questions asked. If you want to know her best free to play weapon, it's the magic guy, which is a three star weapon. Just like Zhang Li with the black tassel. So yeah. Um, Nahida, a thousand floating dreams is her best weapon. This is literally the weapon you would run if you want to uh, have a serious Nahida build. As for artifacts, 4-piece Steepwood. This is her best set. No questions asked. This is literally a set made for her because it decreases Dendro res. And what does she do? She does Dendro damage. So, yeah. 
As for constellations, I have her at C0. Again, I use her a way too much, so I might get this to C2. And in C2, all dental reactions score 20% crit rate and 100% crit damage fixed. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> it also stacks up beyond what Nahida is. So basically, take your Nahida base crit rate crit damage and then stack it upon that. That is basically what your new crit rate crit damage will be on her C2. Yeah, this is way too good. <laughs> and as for Talents, I have her at C6-10-10. Yes, double crown. <laughs> so yeah, there is Nahida. Really, really good uh, Dendro support. Still one of the best to this very day. Everyone uses her a lot. She's literally the premier character for Spiral Abyss. So yeah. Next up, we have... A contender for one of the best Hydro sub DPSs in the game, as well as being literally the same thing as Shang Cho. We have jo Ye Lon, our girl Ye Lon. <laughs> so yeah, um, as you can see here, her max HP is pretty high because she scales off of max HP. And also, I gave her high energy recharge because she needs the energy recharge because her burst is her bread and butter. So yeah, crit rate crit damage is pretty good. Um, as you can see here, that is a really, really good crit rate crit damage ratio. She basically crits all the time, so yeah. As for her weapon, I have Aqua Simulacra. This is her best weapon, no questions asked. I don't think there's any other weapon you would run besides the Stringless. I think that's her best free-to-play weapon, the Stringless. But Aqua Simulacra is literally her best weapon. So if you ever did pull Yelon and not pull her weapon, pull her weapon. It's actually really, really good. As for Artifact Set, I have 4-Piece Emblem. This is her best set. No questions asked. Her main kit is all about the burst damage and also the... Um, uh, she's also a sub-DPS since she will be off-field most of the time. And her burst is literally Shincho's burst. So yeah, this is literally her best set. It's literally the same set Shincho runs. As for Constellation, C0. She doesn't need Constellations for help. If you want to get more Hydro Particles, then I guess you can get her C1, since it gives her more um, stuff to work with on her um, elemental skill. But other than that, um, Yaylon C0 is all she needs. And as for Talent 6, 7, 8, I am planning to level this up to level 10, but I ran out of Talent materials, so I have to basically uh, get my Resin naturally, since I don't have any um, spare Resin. So, yeah, um, a lot of projects I have to work on, but yeah, this is what I can get it at. But at level 8 talent, Yelon's still pretty good. So yeah, there's Yelon, um, really, really good Hydro sub-DPS, still one of the best in the game. And last but not least, we have Baiju, who is currently out, um, right now. So if you, uh, enjoyed my Baiju performance and if you're curious if you want Baiju or not, then, well, it's up to you to decide to summon for him. I would say summon, because he's actually a really, really good dendro healer. So yeah. So here is his stats. 40k HP, as you see there. No crit rate crit damage, because he's literally a support. He doesn't need it. And then his ER is at 226%, meaning that I can get his burst really fast and heal a lot. So yeah. As for his weapon, I have Prototype Amber. This is his best weapon. Um, craftable weapon and free-to-play weapon. Um, you could run other weapons as well, but Prototype Amber is his best free-to-play weapon, so I just gave it that. Favonius Codex is also pretty good too if you want more energy recharge, but Prototype Amber is literally his best free-to-play weapon. As for artifacts, I have four-piece Deepwood Memories. Yes, Deepwood can stack. Remember that. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I read Deepwood. Um, this is his best um, artifact set for Dendro support. So yeah, this is what I ran. It's just way too good. Um, yeah. As for Constellations, I'm at C0. Again, he doesn't need help. Um, he's literally just a Dendro healer. But if you want Constellations, you could just get one additional charge on his elemental skill. And then for this, you could just heal a lot and also um, get Dendro damage as well. So that's pretty nice. As for Talent 666, um, I have him mentally built, but I might plan to get him to crowns since I use him a lot um, currently, since Baiju right now is really well built on my end, and I use him a lot in Dendro teams, so yeah. So there is um, all my team members right there, all eight of them. And that is the end of this Spiral Abyss video, so yes. Um, I will say this, good luck to everyone on this Spiral Abyss. Hope you guys can get the 9-star clear on floor 12. 
and good luck with the lectors. You'll need it. But if you do have Nouvellet, well, have fun. <laughs> because this might be Nouvellet's best floor ever to uh, showcase him. So yeah. Well, anyways, if you liked this uh, video, make sure to leave a like down below. And also, if you do enjoy my content, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell if you do subscribe to not miss out on a single upload that I do. Any amount of support is greatly appreciated, keeps me going um, with the videos and whatnot. Yeah, and I will say this, thank you very much if you do um, like and subscribe. It really means a lot to me. And comment down below, what do you think of this Spiral Abyss? You think it's really difficult? You think it's pretty easy? You think that it's just average difficulty? Let me know in the comments down below. And also post your teams down below as well. I want to see what you guys did uh, to get the 9 star clear on this floor. And as always, thank you guys for watching this Spiral Abyss video. And I'll see you guys in the next Genshin video.